All right, guys, hello. Yes, we are going to talk about stuff that might happen this weekend. This weekend does not look so great. In fact, it looks downright pretty crappy. But, uh, you know, there might be some hope for it. Hopefully, we'll get through it without too much of a dump. But a big dump could actually be coming in the coming week. Especially with the Fed emergency. Well, I wouldn't buy right now, honestly. I really wouldn't buy right now. I mean, like, you don't really know what's going to happen on Monday. I doubt the Fed I doubt the Fed emergency thing is going to be good. I can't really see the Fed emergency meeting being good for crypto. I mean, I guess they could say we're not going to raise interest rates at all, but I just I just don't really see that. Plus like for the better for the betterment of the economy, I kind of want them to raise the interest rate cuz if they don't raise the interest rate, we're just going to be in more pain later. It could be like 5-10 years down the road, but they definitely need to they definitely need to raise the interest rate. No, it's a, no, no, the standard meeting is actually in March. It's an emergency meeting. It's actually an emergency meeting on Monday. They were going to just meet in March. It's also like a closed board meeting. It's, it's, a, it's a closed board meeting. Wouldn't they call for it? I'm not really sure, but uh, the one on Monday is definitely not like... Um, it, it's it's a closed meeting for the Fed uh, governors. I, I think they probably called it after the inflation numbers came out. That's probably what I'm guessing. They, 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 they probably called it after the inflation numbers came out on Thursday because the inflation was higher than expected. And it doesn't really seem... The inflation really doesn't seem to be waning down. That's probably... That's most likely why they called it. But realistically, like, I, I almost semi expect, I almost semi expect them to actually, um, yeah, I almost kind of semi expect them to raise the uh, interest rate right away instead of wait for March. I mean, the thing is, like, it'll probably, like, I think all these effects will have, uh, all these things will have effects in the next few months. Long term, I'm not really worried. Did bad inflation numbers affect uh, M&A and Disney other companies crushed earnings? No, bad inflation numbers don't really affect co companies' earnings. But bad inflation numbers play on like what people think the econ where the where people think the economy is at. The thing is, it probably like the seven percent is probably transitory. It'll probably last this year, and that's probably it. Like the seven percent is probably like the seven percent is probably like a yearly thing. But they want to get it down fast, and that's why they have to raise the interest rates. Look, regardless of what you think, our interest rates have been too low for way too long. Like, our interest rates have been way, way too low for way, way too long. And that's a huge problem. Because, like, if you if you have interest rates that low for a long time, you're going to have inflation regardless. Because it's so easy to borrow money. Uh, what happened? Fed increased rate. No, no, no. Like, um, well, the Fed's holding an emergency meeting on Monday, February 14th. So that has some people really scared. And yeah, the Russia tension's kicking up, but I don't really expect Putin to do anything. Someone who is panicking about 10% drop doesn't deserve success. I mean, we could have more than like a 10% drop, honestly. But, you know, to me, it doesn't really matter. You really can't add gas because gas just like, gas will go like 50% one year and then negative 50% the next year. There's more going on than just bad inflation. There's full collapse coming. There's not a full collapse coming. Look, it's it's not as bad as it's not actually as bad as our situation back in the 80s. In the 80s, we had high inflation, high unemployment, and high interest rates. We had all those things, and we didn't collapse then. We're not going to collapse now. Is it true that just announced that they don't want us to be involved anymore since it's getting worse? Uh, I'm not really sure. I didn't hear that from Europe. Maybe Ukraine. Oh yeah, people do use gas, but like you can't really you can't factor in gas as inflation because then half the if you factor in gas as part of inflation, like half the years would actually be negative. Because there are years where like it went down like 25-30%, regardless of which administration it was under. Gas really depends on like OPEC. You can't really factor that into inflation. Look, the thing is, like, people, like, I think there's too many people that in crypto that are just cheering for a collapse, and when it doesn't happen, they're all, like, all, they're always wondering why. And it's because it was never going to happen.
Food you can actually factor in, but gas you really can't. Because like, like, realistically, gas can go up 50% in one year and down 50% the next year. Gas more or less depends on OPEC and their production capabilities. And also like geopolitical situations like Russia will actually affect gas. Think uh, we're gonna get involved? Bid already, uh, already days we're not. Is look, I really, I personally really don't think Putin's going to invade Russia. If they um, uh, in invade Ukraine, if they invade Ukraine, I think the U.S. will probably send troops. I bought another thousand dollars in spell crypto. Look, the, th the thing is, like, the, the entire economic system is not going to collapse. Crypto people, like, crypto purists have been trying, have been depending on it for too long. They've literally predicted it, like, every single year for the last decade. But the thing is, like, the system is, the system is better balanced than that. It's not going to randomly just collapse. Yes, this, the crypto market may dump, but that doesn't mean the system collapsed. No, it's not time to hoard toilet paper. Look, people thought it was time to hoard toilet paper when COVID started. I, like, I actually bought a lot of toilet paper, and I'm still using that toilet paper like two years later. It's not all going to collapse. I mean, like, uh, there's a lot of people just cheering for it all to collapse, but and when it doesn't happen, they're going to be wondering why. The interest rate thing doesn't have anything to do with the debt, actually. Look, we actually owe a lot of other countries money, but a lot of countries also owe us money. Like, they never really talk about the other piece of it. Dude, Clout Gangster, last time you shorted 36000 at 25x and you got wrecked, so don't tell me about shorting the market. Although, like, it's probably going down next week. Look, yeah, yes, we have about seven... First of all, of that $30 trillion, most of it's owned by U.S. citizens. Not Most of it is not owned by foreign countries. Thanks, man. Thanks for the donation. Look, people want to talk about the real inflation rate, but if you count gas, half the years would be negative inflation rate. So you can't really count gas. I don't think that I don't really I don't really know what the Biden and Putin like a meeting is going to be. But if it doesn't produce anything, yes, we're in a bad state. No, it doesn't. But look, a financial collapse is not actually coming. Countries don't want to use USD, have global currency, that's all. Look, look, most countries still want USD. It's still by far the most stable currency, despite like the 7 8% increase this year. I bought just an ADA right now. Okay. Uh, 2017 is conservative. Look, pe people can say like 2017 all they want, but if you actually look at prices over the last 20, 30 years, it really hasn't been that much. Russian war game is just on USA and UK, just sanctioned Nord. It's just about that game. Look, it's about like, look, they, Russia basically wants assurances that, the, that Ukraine will never join NATO. That's what they really want. And like, Ukraine's been denied NATO for the last 20 years. Does Putin want to expand Russian territory? Sure he does. Does Putin actually want to expand Russian territory? Sure he does. But he's also not, Putin's also not crazy. Well, also, like, real look, we've been through this before, Big Ether 2. Like, real estate depends on where. If you go to, like, some of the big cities, yes. If you go to the south, no. As long as we stay out of it, it's good. Look, if, if Russia invades, we are going to, we're probably going to send troops in. That's not, like, I, I don't think, I, I don't think we're just going to sit by and let Russia take Ukraine. But I also don't think they're going to invade. Do you know the time when Biden and Putin... I, I don't really know. It's, it's sometime this weekend. I'm sure we'll see war and raid hikes in the same year. I don't really... Look, I still don't think he's going to invade. If they do invade, yes, it's going to crash the market. But also, the, the conflict's going to be localized to Ukraine. It's not going to be like nuclear war or anything. 
Uh, if Ukraine also look, look, our countries look, our country econ our economy can never really operate like the fifties. In the fifties, everyone else was bombed to hell, and we were the only country that wasn't bombed. That was never going to last, anyways. If Russia invades, Russia will get invaded. No, it won't get invaded in return, but like, economic sanctions will basically screw them. Michael Presti, like, the thing, you do understand that the reason the U.S. dollar is so prominent in the world is because we take part in uh, world affairs, right? If if Russia invades Ukraine and we don't respond, I can almost guarantee you that China will invade Taiwan sometime because they're going to think, like, well, you're not going to defend, if you, like, if you don't defend Ukraine, why would you defend Taiwan? All I'm saying. Got any Cardano native assets besides uh, besides your ISPO rewards? Um, I haven't collected my ISPO. I have some Hosky, but that's because someone gave me a bunch of Hosky. Look, look, we're not going. I don't think we're going to remain silent if if they try to occupy Ukraine. I don't think they're going to do that though. I think Putin actually knows better than that. Look, look. Ideally, Russia would actually like to take Turkey and the Straits of Bosporus, but that's not going to happen. So they're focusing on other territory. I do think, look, I personally think Putin is bluffing to get concessions from NATO. I think that's really what Putin is doing. He's heightening tensions. He's, he's getting more, he, he's stationing more troops on the border. Yes, an invasion is a possibility, but he knows there's consequences if he invades. So he, it, it, the, the decision to invade is really not that easy. I think like some people are looking at it like too much of a foregone conclusion. He knows like what it would lead to. No leader is going to risk nuclear war. Okay, Xi Jinping might be that dumb, but Vladimir Putin usually isn't going to be that stupid. Look, SC, like... Russia can move that many troops as a display of force to basically get concessions from the West. Why the heck would Putin in, invade during the Super Bowl? He's seeing what he can get away with. Yeah, he's basically seeing like how much he can actually push the West to get in, uh, how much he can get from the West. Look, uh, you can't prevent him from invading. If he tells his troops to invade, they're going to invade. But there are consequences of invading. I do actually think he's bluffing right now. I do actually think he's bluffing. Unless you actually put like nuclear missiles in Ukraine, I don't think he's going to invade. And like Ukraine, like Ukraine gave back Russia all their nuclear missiles a long time ago. That was part of the ag original agreement. Ukraine lets go of its nuclear weapons and then Russia doesn't take over Ukraine. Yes, does Putin want to reestablish the Soviet Union? Sure. The, he probably does want to reestablish the Soviet Union, but he doesn't have the power to do so right now. I'm not fighting any more wars. Well, you don't have to because they're not going to draft you unless you're actually in the army. Someone get a hold of Joe. Oh, I need his opinion during these times. Look, look, the thing is, like, if the U.S. wasn't the world's police, someone else would be the world's police. And I'd rather have the U.S. do it than anyone else. Because I'd much rather have the U.S. be the world's police than China or Russia. I think that'd be a lot worse than the United States being the world police. And if the U.S. steps down, one of those two countries will step up to be the world's police. And, you know, like, with China and Russia, like, if I... I mean, like, they can actually take care of things easier because they don't have to worry about humanitarian details. If uh, someone opposes them, they can just firebomb them. Look, I, I do think he is probably bluffing. I, I, and I do think, like, the United States and Europe just pulled their people out as a safety precaution. Oh, if China had the military power, they would easily take that job. They're already trying to do it in the South China Sea. But they don't have enough power to do it globally. Not be cool with invasion of Taiwan in any other country, but it isn't our problem to police all of this? Well, realistically, like, our, our neutrality stance is kind of what led to World War II. Because it was like, oh, they took over Poland. Oh, let's not, let, let, basically, like, they took, like, Germany took over Poland. Or not, like, Germany took over, like, uh, Czechoslovakia. Not our problem. Germany took over this country. Not our problem. Germany took over that country. Not our problem. 
And then eventually it became our problem. Has anyone been following the Russian side of the story or anyone making stories based on Western news? Probably half the China's military equipment don't even work properly since they're made in China. China's military equipment is mostly bought from Russia, actually. China, bu China buys most of their advanced military equipment from Russia. They can't get it from the United States, so they get it from Russia. Well, Javon Wells, it's, it doesn't exactly work that way because Russia's military is still more powerful than China's military. And, like, Mussolini was definitely much, much weaker than Hitler. The UN can't do anything, man. Look, Michael Presti, the UN can't do anything. Remember, Russia's on the Security Council. What the hell do you expect them to do? Russia and China are on the Security Council. That's like two out of the five members that will actually vote in favor of Russia. What the hell do you expect them to do? They can't do anything. Look, the US does like, the, the, the UN essentially handles like humanitarian crises. They don't really handle like these like international conflicts, especially if the major powers are involved because the major powers all have a seat on the Security Council. China and Russia and North Korea are all working together. Russia is going to hit Ukraine. I, I, look, look, the thing is, I feel like if you actually let Ukraine, Russia take Ukraine, then China will. there's a good chance that China will attack Taiwan. If you actually stick up in Ukraine, China might have second thoughts about attack, attacking Taiwan. Because like, China will, if, if China knows that the United States will not actually interfere, they will actually attack Taiwan. It's only out of fear that the U.S. will intervene that they don't attack Taiwan. Russia and China are not friends. Like, diplomatically, they may, but they, they might not be, but they will ally against the United States. They're both authoritarian regimes. No, there won't be, no, there will not be World War III, all right? There's not going to be World War III. If any, look, any conflict right now is going to be confined to Ukraine. Both sides might send troops into Ukraine, but it's going to be within Ukraine, did UN approve the attack? <laughs> oh, look, UN basically handles like humanitarian and like natural disasters. UN does, the UN can't do anything else, and especially like the UN can't do anything if any it, it, in regards if if uh, one of the perpetrators is one of the five major powers because they're all on the Security Council and all it takes is one veto vote to shoot down any resolution. Obviously, Vlad, Vladimir Putin is not going to use nukes. That's obviously completely unfounded. You can't... Look, the thing... Yes, we have an alternative to the US. Like, that's why we have NATO, Michael Presti. That's why we have defense... That's why we have NATO and defense treaties. But the problem with defense treaties is if someone attacks one of your allies, you have to respond. The U.S. easily has the military strength to com to cope with both Russia and China. Honestly, the U.S. has more military strength than the rest of the world combined. It's just more of a logistical problem for us. Shouldn't the U.S. ultimate pro shouldn't be the U.S.'s ultimate? But that's that's the problem. We're like we're the own we're, we're like one of the we're like the superpower in the world. The rest of the countries that are powerful are authoritarian regimes. So they're going to want to take over other things. No, no, land deals. The UN will not vote to condemn the action. Did you forget that like China and Russia have two seats on the Security Council? They're not going to vote to condemn the regime. And you can't actually do anything. You can't do anything without China or Russia's vote because they have ultimate veto power. And take Taiwan, it would be the biggest defeat ever. China can't take Taiwan fast enough before the U.S. responds. But... If, if if you let if you actually let Russia take Ukraine and you don't respond, there is a much bigger chance that China attacks Taiwan because they're going to think like, well, you didn't protect Ukraine, and they're an actual country. That that means you're not actually going to protect us either. You're not going to protect Taiwan either. So they will probably invade Taiwan. But see, like Chinese like, like Chinese nationalists like. I mean, most nationalists are pretty dumb. See, like, Taiwan has a bunch of missiles pointed at your major cities. If you invade them, they will shoot those missiles, and China can't shoot the missiles down. So, like, you see, a lot of these, like, a lot of the Chinese nationalists you see on social media, they think that if you, if China attacks Taiwan, all Taiwan is going to do is sit there and defend. No, Taiwan, Taiwan, Taiwan is definitely going to counterattack. That's almost guaranteed.
Yeah, but land deals, land deals, you, you do have the majority, but remember, each member of the Security Council has ultimate veto power. So if you don't have a 5-0 vote in the Security Council, you can't do crap. No, if, if China, yes, if China attacks Taiwan, we're going to have a problem with semiconductors, definitely. But we can, we honestly can build those facilities in our own country. It's, it's, it's not like America can't produce semiconductors. We can actually produce those ourselves. It's just going to take a while. Doesn't China need the USA? Walmart made China products. China and the U.S. are dependent on each other. So, like, that's another factor. Like, the, the guys, the people in power understand that war would be disaster for all sides. But that doesn't mean they're going to act in our best interests. They're, like, the leaders of China and Taiwan, the leaders of China and uh, Russia, their interest in, is keeping their own power. You also have to remember Russia and China have some many infrastructure issues and they aren't in positions to invade anyone. Um, short-term invasion they can do. They can't really carry out a long-term invasion. No, you're right about that. Do a shoot down three screws to them in game, set, match. It's not that easy. Yes, you would collapse a lot of things in China if you, if you shoot down three gorges dam. But that doesn't really help you in the fact that they actually have a military that's like 10 times your size. Yeah, I don't need a truck, nor do I want a truck. Intelligence started today that Iran is weak away from nuclear missile. Haven't they been saying that for like the last 10 years? A lot of U.S. citizens are tired of policing everyone alone. It'd be different if we had support, but the rest of the world wants to point their fingers at it and mix the bad guys. Well, I mean, that's why the U.S. has such international influence, though, is the thing. It's because of the size of our military and that we do intervene everywhere. We wouldn't actually have the international influence if we didn't. And I ran... And the thing is that U.S. corporations are also everywhere in the world. What would Japan do in case of a China attacking Taiwan as Japan's little buddy? Um, I don't think Japan would do anything. Like, the, like Japan's army is pretty small. I, I doubt Japan would actually be able to do anything. Look, look, look. The, the situation in Ukraine is heating up, but I do think Putin is bluffing. If he does attack, there's going to be serious consequences for all sides. First of all, energy prices are going to shoot way up. The U.S. can, the U.S. will actually be okay, but it's mostly like European energy prices that will actually shoot way, way up. It's harder to take over Taiwan than you, it is harder to take over Taiwan because China doesn't have a very good navy. But the thing is, without America's support, Taiwan can't keep China out for that long. Maybe a couple of weeks. Japan's economy is only weak because they have too many old people. Just bombing the place isn't taking over. No, but like, well, the thing is, like, China has a lot more troops than, than Taiwan. And, like, China's navy is pretty poor. But they can overwhelm Taiwan's defenses. Like, the Chinese Air Force can overwhelm the Taiwan Air Force, the, 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 the Taiwanese uh, defense, if the U.S. doesn't intervene. And that's why the U.S. intervention um, is actually so important to Taiwan. The U.S. has adopted a policy of we're not going to tell China if we would react or not if China attacks. So, like, it keeps, like, their leadership guessing, but the leadership's not going to jeopardize their own downfall if they do invade and fail. If war breaks out with Russia and China, we're all going to pay $10 and $15 for a gallon and food will skyrocket. Food will go down. Food will definitely... I mean, like, I think basic food won't, but meat will definitely go up. I mean, meat's already going up. U.S. will enter. The thing is, you, the U.S. can actually produce its own gas. Uh, U.S. will intervene, and it wouldn't be easier to handle Chinese Navy than Russian tanks. I mean, tanks really aren't the thing, but Russia's military is much stronger than China's. Like, Russia's military is honestly a lot stronger than China's. So, yes, it would be harder to handle Russia's military than China's military. Uh, oil will be 100. How many, how will TMRs call, call go? Will Biden just do nothing and let it slide? I don't think so. Like, there's definitely going to be economic sanctions at the least. And America has actually deployed a lot of troops to Eastern Europe right now. So I do think the U.S. will actually intervene if, if, if uh, Ukraine gets invaded. But I don't think Putin really wants to invade. I highly doubt Putin actually wants to invade. Look, people are be people are honestly being a little too hysterical about this right now. Most likely, nothing is going to happen. Will we be paying more for gas without a war? 
it, look, the U.S. has actually subsidized gas forever. That's why gas is so cheap in the states. Because we like our government subsidized nat- uh, gas forever. It's so much more expensive everywhere else. I mean, if you just hop par- across the border into Canada, gas is a lot more expensive there. I actually think if China invades Taiwan, it'll give Japan an excuse to rearm themselves. Uh, Japan doesn't really need an excuse to rearm themselves. It's like the Japanese people don't really want to rearm themselves. I think we re- I think we kind of removed the restrictions on Japan rearming themselves a while ago. Yes, Japan can actually arm themselves. Japan can arm themselves arm themselves extremely fast if they're allowed to. Want something? That's why he's showing off. Yes, Putin basically wants a guarantee that NATO will never allow Ukraine to join. Ukraine's been trying to join NATO forever. It's not Biden. It's the United States that can't allow Russia to overrun another country. Yeah, I, I do think that I, I do actually think that uh, the U because like Russia's look, Russia and China are both antagonistic countries of the United States, and they're both major world powers. Well, like the Crimea, look, look Crimea, like uh, Crimea, essentially wanted to rejoin Russia, anyways. You think AK America can stop Russia if they decide to go to war? They can't. But but the thing is, it's going to be harder for it's going to be harder. It's not going to be like a straight shot to Kiev. Ukraine's going to take a while to subdue subdue uh, subdue if Russia decides to invade. Come on, man. J- j- don't want any war. But if China is invading other countries, then that's yeah. I do think Japan will actually give money to rearm themselves. But the Japanese economy has been bad for quite a while. Uh, is there a dump coming? I do think there's a dump coming. But m- but. The dump is not really with Putin and Russia. The dump is more with like the Fed's emergency meeting on Monday. I do believe they're going to raise interest rates sooner than we thought. And I do believe they're going to raise it more than we thought. All the countries in Asia that China wants to invade Japan is right after Taiwan. Uh, look, if we invade Taiwan, I'm almost sure, like, I'm pretty sure Japan will actually arm itself. Japan's technology is far superior to China's, though. Better to <laughs> If America puts 10,000 troops on Canada, is it an invasion? I don't really think Canada would care, and I don't think America would actually do that because that's a waste of our money. They, they did, Jim, but like the Japanese people are really against like a heavy rearmament. They might be changing their mind because of China, though. Like We, li- we actually lifted the ban on Japan rearming themselves several years ago. It is actually a buying opportunity if we do crash, though, but I would definitely wait. I would definitely like wait until Monday... I would definitely like wait until Monday before buying anything. Um, the thing is, like Japan could easily have one of the most powerful arm, uh, armed forces in the world if they're actually allowed to rearm. I mean, if they actually want to rearm, not if they're allowed to, because they've been allowed to for a while. They just don't want to. Inflation is trans- I just never, never. Look, the the high inflation we we have right now is probably transitory. But the thing is, like. Like, inflation of, like, you know, a couple of percentage points, that's not transitory. That'll always be there. Yeah, but, like, most Americans also enjoy the economic dominance that the U.S. actually has. Look, the reason that the U.S. dollar, like, one of the reasons the U.S. dollar isn't really in trouble with hyperinflation is because of our international status. Because because of where the world's police, like, Basically, everyone wants the U.S. dollar. Would I? When would I sell? Well, I'm not going to sell until it repumps. Not like, you, know, you, you. Well, the, the UN is useless, man. The UN is completely useless. Like, also, Russia is look, look. Russia's Russia and China both have a seat on the Security Council. The UN can't do crap. It, it's it's more NATO that they're concerned with. There isn't really any, there's no real theory between Biden and the UN. Look, the UN can't actually do anything. You, like, James, you don't really seem to understand that like Putin, like both Putin and Xi Jinping have a seat on the UN Security Council. They both have ultimate veto power.
DHS asked if Canada wanted them to remove the protesters and said if that was on our outside, we would clean it up. Why would we help other countries when they don't even like us? me for trying to help with these situations should we be fine with a bad rap in europe they never recognize us helping and make it into a bad thing it, it has a major trade deficit with certain countries but we have a giant trade surplus with other countries as well look at like look actually look at our trade circle like look how much other countries owe us and how much we owe other countries like, people only really look at one side of the equation. They don't really look at how much other countries actually owe us. Like, Europe actually owes us a lot. And they, you, Europe actually owes the United States a lot of money. But I think most of that's left over from, like, post-World War II, though. If China invading Taiwan, there's no doubt Japan will rearm. Oh, yeah, Japan will definitely rearm if China invades Taiwan. But they, they're not going to get involved with Taiwan, though. Yes, like, the U.S. Corp... Like, but you see, no, look, look. U.S. like being a look being a capitalistic country, a lot of that technology is in the hands of corporations and not the government itself. Corporations can be, like corporations are much easier bought. Like corporations are much much easier bought because like our technology is not really in the hands of our government; it's in the hands of these powerful corporations, and. It's much easier, like, it's actually pretty easy to, it's not that hard to buy, like, secondary technology from them. Like, if Microsoft wants into China's, like, market, they have to give some of that technology over. We have bases in all countries for what reason? Protection is the cost is the cost of imperialism. I mean, it's sort of like imperialism what we actually have now, but that also allows us to have influence economically and politically in all areas of the world. If the U.S. gives up that power, if the U.S. actually gives up that power, a someone else will step into the vacuum and it'll be a lot worse. And b, um, like it will actually hurt our economy if we give up that power. As long as the world depends on Taiwan for chips, I doubt China dares do anything. I mean, China can just try to take it over. China's uh, look, China's buying parts of like a lot of industries. It is it is definitely somewhat concerning that they're actually doing that. So Japan uh, wants payback so bad for the centuries of Japanese oppression against Chinese. So crypto night, that's not necessarily true. The Communist Party actually kind of, the Communist Party's like much more friendly to Japan than like the, the overall people are. Because if it wasn't for Japan, if it wasn't for the Japanese invasion during World War II, the Communists would have been destroyed by the nationalists. It was only because of the Japanese invasion that they actually survived. Mao understood that. That's why he never demanded an apology from Japan. Is Thanks, man. Thanks, Little Nation. Uh, but uh, here, if you're responding, do you have any information about the new BitTorrent? Um, not really. I mean, we can look at it. We can, we can, we can look at this BitTorrent thing. I mean, I, I think BitTorrent and Tron are doing better since Justin Sun left a while ago. But I'm still, I, I still believe he's like in the. Uh, I still believe he, he's in like kind of like running things he's just not the ceo anymore so start in three days so they have like a blockchain hackathon that's starting in three days um they're trying to add to certain pools but i don't really see any big news i don't really see any i don't really see any huge news just the usual stuff Just mainly, mainly just the usual stuff for uh, for BitTorrent. I mean, it kind of like spiked uh, early last year, like everything else. It's holding on pretty well, though. There's nothing spectacular going on right now, but it's holding on decently.
Thanks, man. Thanks, for the donation. Ready for Exo World? Yes, I am. I'm, I'm hoping one of these V Chain. Thanks for the donation. I'm hoping one of these V Chain games really hits it big time. Definitely hoping one of these big V Chain games hits it big time, because then like that's really good for the rest of us too. Look, we actually look. No, like we don't really make most of our own chips. But here's the thing. We actually have the technology and the capacity to make those chips. We just ship them to Taiwan because it's cheaper to manufacture there. It's not like we don't know how to make the chips. We know how to make the chips. It's just that we ship them somewhere where it's cheaper to make them. Like if Taiwan, like if Taiwan gets taken over, we can make our own chips. Don't make that mistake. So what's the so what's with the giant dump? But I should get my wallet ready. Well, I, I do think like look, I, I do think like what the Fed actually does on Monday deter will determine like if we dump or not. But there is a good chance we'll dump over, uh, dump under forty thousand over the weekend, just in anticipation, because like the 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 sentiment and the winds are definitely favoring negative right now. It's definitely like not positive right now for the sentiment and the winds. So like we, I honestly think we could actually dump to like you know thirty five or even thirty thousand because of like all this news coming in. But it's like mainly the Fed. It's not really Ch Russia. I still don't think Russia's going to invade. But the thing is like it's mainly the Fed. I mean, with Russia and the Fed, it could dump, like, quite a bit lower, actually. With, with the Russia and the Fed, it could honestly dump a lot lower. But the thing is, like, Ukraine doesn't think invasion is, is coming. Like, Putin has said an invasion isn't coming, but I can't really trust Putin, obviously. American because... What's the VEX price? Um, it's, like, it's a little higher than two, I think. Let me, let me check. Let me check the farm on what the VEX price is. Uh, 210, 210. VEX is incredibly volatile. VEX is very, very volatile. Like, if, if Bitcoin goes up to 100,000, that shit's going to be over 10 bucks easily. Uh, the, the Fed is uh, the, the Federal Reserve is holding a closed door meeting on Monday. It's kind of like an emergency meeting. They might actually raise the interest rate right then. How are we going to pay our taxes if it keeps dumping? Um, if you haven't sold, it doesn't really matter because you don't have any taxes. You don't have any gains or losses to report if you haven't sold. The deep dive on Cardano stable coins. There isn't, I mean, like the only one I know of is Dejed. I don't really know of any others for Cardano stable coins. The people who say it's all a scam? No, because like then they'll actually have to admit they're wrong and they would never actually do that. Thanks, man. Thanks for the donation. You can ask for an extension, but you will have to pay penalties. If you fought, look, if you file your, if you file your taxes and then ask for an extension and you don't pay them, it's a, it's a penalty of 0.5% each month. Cause I've actually done that before, like once since the Euro and the pound are more powerful than the dollar. How about they show some, the Euro and the pound are not more powerful than the dollar. They might be worth more, but they're definitely not as powerful as the dollar. Everyone knows that man, like China and Russia, China and Russia using the Euro to settle is more of a symbolic thing. Uh, you know, the thing is, like, I think it, I think, like, there will be some dump happening, mainly because of the Fed stuff. The Russia stuff, people like to speculate on, but I highly, I don't think it's actually going to happen. Oh, by the way, do you guys know that the Coinbase Advanced platform actually, uh, like, some hacker actually found an exploit? Some hacker actually found an exploit in the Coinbase Advanced platform, but he was a white hat hacker, so he just took the bug bounty and, like, he told them about it, so it was, yeah. The euro is not one. I really don't like the euro is nowhere near as powerful as the dollar, especially since the UK actually left the EU. Oh, look, China and Russia are basically trying to stick it to the United States, but you know they, they didn't use the Russian ruble or the Chinese yuan because people would just laugh at them for doing that. But, you know, like, it, look, even if the Fed uh, ups interest rates right now and Russia, as long as Russia doesn't really attack, it's not going to dip that low. Also, with the Fed, with, with the, well, yeah, but the, the Fed's dumping that Bitcoin, the Fed's not going to dump it on the open market, obviously. The Fed's going to auction it off and it really won't go, it's not going to affect the price right now. Spain and see if you uh, get so much for your dollar. I will get what the dollar is actually worth. Also, Michael Presti. Even if I go across the border in Canada, if I go like 100 miles of the border, they won't accept U.S. dollars just for convenience. 
a lot of countries only accept, look, the dollar is the unit of international trade, but that doesn't mean like if you're in a certain country, they'll accept it. Like if you go to China, if you actually go to China, most major retailers won't accept US dollars. But like if you go to any of the street merchants, they'll be they'll gladly accept US dollars. Hell, they'll they'll give you a discount for using US dollars. Do you ever speak with other YouTubers? There's a show called Scam Economy. It's only it's only one sided so far, but the welcomes pro crypto call ins. I haven't really tried that. Look, the thing is, crypto is obviously not a scam, but it's also not going to replace the current economy. It's going to work alongside the current economy. I think, like, if you've actually been watching events, I think that should be pretty. If you've been watching actual events, that should be pretty obvious to you. Cash my dollars for euros? Yeah, I will get the I will get the exchange rate. I can go up to the foreign exchange window right now and cash my dollars for euros. I will get the exact exchange rate. I think it's like eighty five cents per euro. I, I I can get like eighty five I can get like eighty five cents of euro for every dollar. I will get the exchange rate. Look, the the amount the money is worth actually has nothing to do with like how powerful the money is. Uh, the graphics on MVG are insane from what you posted on Discord. Uh, well. MVG actually has a Blizzard dev. It actually depends on where in Canada. If you are within like, if you are around the border, they will accept US dollars, but they'll only accept it on a one-to-one -one basis. They don't want to make change. But look, there is a small, there, there is a fee for converting, there is a fee for converting uh, currencies internationally. You do realize that. That's why like a lot of business owners don't want to deal with it because it's just one more step for them. And you can easily go you can easily go to the foreign exchange window and trade your American dollars for Canadian dollars. Uh The world loves the US dollar. Look, small look Smaller countries all want the U.S. dollar. They, they know it's much more stable than their own currency. The reason that smaller countries are actually jumping into crypto is because they can't get their hands on the dollar. That's why they're jumping into crypto. Like, if they can actually get their hands on the U.S. dollar, they wouldn't be jumping into crypto. But the thing is, like, the, the supply of the U.S. dollar, like, even though we print a lot of the U.S. dollar, smaller countries and people in smaller countries have a pretty hard time getting their hands on the U.S. dollar. And since they can't get on the U.S. dollar, they just go after crypto, which is like the next big thing. Dude, I can go to the foreign exchange window and get the foreign exchange rate. I've done it multiple times before. It's not that difficult. Yes, they charge a fee, which is why you get slightly less than the foreign exchange rate. I used to do, I, I go into Canada and do it all the time, before the pandemic anyways. I can do it in China as well. But I, I, I've changed, I've exchanged money at the foreign exchange window multiple times at airports and like across the border in Canada. It's not that difficult. You get the exchange rate, probably like minus 3% because they charge a fee. We should see uh, 35K BTC in at least the next two weeks. We could. I don't know if we will. I think it really depends on what happens on Monday and maybe the call tomorrow. I'm not really sure. Like, But going into the weekend, I would definitely say the sentiment's kind of negative. Um, like, There's just a lot of negative things uh, happening. Of of course, yes. That's because the euros, the national, like the euros, the common currency over there. But you can just trade your USD for euro. Look, how much the USD and euro are relatively worth is completely irrelevant. Like the Chinese, the, the Japanese yen is pretty powerful in the international market. But you need like over a hundred of them to use uh, to equal the US dollar. That's not how you judge how how powerful like a uh, a currency is. There are like small countries with currencies that are like dollar for dollar are worth more than the Japanese yen. But that doesn't mean their currency is more powerful than the Japanese yen. Michael Presti, what you're saying has nothing to do with how powerful a country's currency actually is. The, U the, the U.S. dollar is still the international currency of business. Yes, each separate country actually has their own currency. That's not surprising. But you can just go and trade your currency at the foreign exchange window. You can just you can just trade your currency at the foreign exchange window for whatever currency they use at the foreign exchange rate. 
Just because the dollar is more than one to one with the U.S. doesn't mean the euro is more powerful. I, I, the Indian rupee is worth like 10, one Indian rupee is worth like five times more than one Japanese yen. But that doesn't mean the rupee is more powerful than the yen. That's not how it works. That, that's, that's not how international affairs work. Japan, like economically, Japan is probably the third, Japan, economically, Japan might be the second, mo well, third most powerful country in the world. But that doesn't mean their currency is actually worth more than like all other countries besides two. No, I don't regret that. You know, Michael have... I don't really know why you think, like, if a currency is worth more, then that country is more powerful. The denominations aren't actually made that way. Well, the thing is, like, the thing is, like, in the United States, generally you only have two choices for people that, like, uh, for, for who you select as president. Yes, one dollar is 75 rupees, but one dollar is like 120 Japanese yen or something. But that does not mean Indian, the rupee is more powerful than the yen. That's not how, that's not how international relations work. Also, like one dollar, like, uh, pay, let, let, me, let me go peso to dollar conversion. Like peso to dollar conversion, one dollar is roughly a little more than 20 pesos. That means each peso is roughly like five Japanese yen. But does not mean the peso is more powerful than the yen. That's that's just not how international relations work. Yes, that's true. One doge does equal one doge. Yeah, it, it's yeah yeah. I just I just showed on I just showed on the channel like one dollar is around twenty pesos. One dollar is over a hundred Japanese yen. So it's like one to five, one to six. Like one Mexican peso is about six Japanese yen almost. But that doesn't mean Mexico is more powerful than Japan. That that's not how it works. You foresee the economy crashing? I'm going to answer that the same way I answer every year. No, I, I, I can see the economy going downwards maybe, at least for the first half of the year, but I don't see it crashing. The predictions of the economy crashing happen like every single year. But the thing is, it doesn't really ever happen. I mean, in 08, yes, it did crash, but at the same time, it didn't just fall apart. And like, It's not like the new economy arose and replaced everything. It's still the same thing. Well, look, if Bitcoin goes down, look, if Bitcoin goes down, everything is going to slip away. All right. The thing is, like, I'm I'm thinking Bitcoin's going to be fairly bearish this weekend, at least at most neutral. I don't really see Bitcoin going way, way up, especially with the Monday headwinds coming. Now, there is a lot of institutional. There is actually a lot of institutional interest in crypto. So that might hold Bitcoin up for a little bit. But I definitely wouldn't depend. I definitely would not depend on that. One pound of lead. It depends on the country. Like the like land deals, the Roman dinar like the Roman dinaris like lasted hundreds of years. My dollar gets me less in space. Yes, because there's an international transaction fee. You know, like a lot of places charge uh, a lot of places give you a discount if you use cash rather than credit card, because there's a fee there. Trading like it, it costs money for businesses to trade your dollar for Spanish pesos. There's like a transaction fee for international exchange. That's why they, that's why they charge more. The gap between ADA and Seoul is widening. Uh, Solana, uh, that's because the market overall is going down. I, I actually believe that uh, if the market heats up, ADA will like ADA will probably outgain Solana. I mean, Solana will probably outgain ADA. ADA and like both ADA and Solana have their own problems right now, um, and it's going to take a while for them to solve those problems. Average is sub forty pounds. Been around currently long. It's yeah, it's probably the pound because it's been around since the eighteen hundreds, at least the eighteen hundreds, probably longer than that. But I mean, like major world powers generally last longer than that. Yes, I know Spain has the euro, 
but it still costs money to tra- it still costs money to trade US dollars for euros. There's an international exchange rate. If you go to the international exchange window, I don't really know what the fee actually is, but like you don't get the exact exchange rate. If you go to trade at the international exchange window, you don't exactly get the exchange rate. Just like, like if you try to, if you go, if you're in, in the United States and you have like Spanish dollars or whatever, like if you're in the United States and you have euros, you're not going to get the exact amount because there's an international exchange fee. Like when you pay a rest, when you pay a restaurant U.S. dollars in Europe, they actually have to exchange that dollar for euros. And the bank charges them like three or four percent or whatever, so they have to charge you three or per, and and the, so the bank actually has to sh- charge you three or four percent more or five percent more or whatever the rate is. Uh, yeah, CCP like in some places they will accept dollars, just like in some places in Canada I can use U.S. dollars. All right, like it, it depends on the business, but like when I go to Canada. When I actually go to Canada and I want to spend U.S. dollars, they will let me do that, but they only will let me spend it on a one-to-one ratio, which means I'm losing out on about, like, 20 cents. Because, like, they don't want to deal with the international exchange fees, so they just overcharge me when I want to spend U.S. dollars. Like, I can't even spend Canadian dollars on the U.S. side of the border. Is it legal to use to use U.S. in China, or can you get it in trouble? It's technically not legal, but, like, if you're, if you're paying in cash at, like, a small street-side shop... They'll take your U.S. dollars. Hell, they re- hell. I mean, they prefer the U.S. dollars. Because remember, like, it, it, like the Chinese government only allows you to ch- exchange about fifty thousand dollars U.S. dollars a year from uh, from uh, Chinese yuan to USD or any other currency. So if you just give them U.S. dollars directly, they don't even have to do that. Wait, what? Uh, what could my channel name actually be? It used to be just cryptocurrency news, but that didn't really work that much either. I can actually change my channel name. That's not that difficult. What, what do you think the channel name actually should be? Because like, I do want to attract more users. I don't really know how I could... Outside of doing like collabs, I don't really know how I could actually promote the channel. 1489 for pound coin? Okay. All right. Nice, nice. I mean, I, I, know, that, I know the British pound has been around the longest... Because, like, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's been around at least since the revolution because they use the same British pound during the revolution. No, nah, I'm not going to try to copy BitBoy. My bag of mangoes went up so much. Bring my bags of mangoes down. Nice. <laughs> the portfolio builder. You know, the thing is, I think I'm going to, look, look, I'm going to create, I'm actually going to create a thread on this for, in my community section of my channel. Crypto Bob. That actually could be like, I mean, like George's like cryptos are us thing actually does pretty well. A Craigslist? I don't think that works. I don't actually think that like really works with this. Yeah, that's kind of like, you know, blue collar consciousness. You are right because that's what I kind of did today and I do, and I did get more viewers than usual. I mean, how about fat cat crypto? Fat cat crypto. Our currency is going to revalue like emerging countries. Um, no, not really. I, I don't think there's going to be a giant. I don't really think there's going to be any giant reset or any giant revaluation. Uh, dollars, you know, today was created in 1914. Yeah, that's that's right. That's right. FCC fat cat crypto. Yes. There, there would be like a, there would be like a really, really big uh there would actually be like a really, really big change. I might, I'll, I'll consider it this spring. No, fat cat, why not?
the world is coming to an end <laughs> permanent clickbait? Uh, hey, it, it, it worked today. I did get more viewers than usual, I guess. <laughs> Crypto Norris channel. Thoughts on MVG? Still no way to stake, but hopeful. I, I mean, like, I don't know. I'm, MVG, I'm hoping the staking comes soon. I just don't really know when. I think it'll be worth it to stake when it comes, though. It's because he's on the same time every day for one hour. Crypto NBA guy, the I hate Ben Simmons channel. Or James Harden is really fat channel. One of those. Or what the heck is up with Kyrie channel. <laughs> fat cat crypto, I see. I'll think I'll think about it. I'll think about it. I, I don't think the channel na name actually matters that much, but you are right about the titles, though. You are actually right about the titles. Like, the dramatic titles will actually draw people in. Oh, SLP, Smooth Love Potion? That's basically... That's just the in-game currency for Axie. I do actually think that's just the in-game currency for Axie, though. Basketball internet invisible money, man. Hey guys, you, but like, uh, dude, th there is actually a crypto. There is actually a crypto called magic internet money. I wouldn't invest in it though, but there is a crypto called MIM or magic internet money. If you guys are interested, I, I definitely wouldn't, uh, I definitely wouldn't buy it, but cause it sounds like a scam, but still. Um, I, I think like safe haven, I would, I, I think like stuff like safe haven, I would definitely consider if I was looking to buy and like, you know, I'm staking for VEX. So that is an ecosystem token that I have some of like any of the, anything that actually has a good yield farm, I definitely uh, would consider. Now I'm, I'm guessing Rams cause like, uh, it just seems like the Rams team just seems better than the Bengals team. I mean, the Rams just definitely seem better than the Bengals. Oh, yeah, MIM is a is, is a stable coin. But Magic Internet money looks. But Magic Internet money sounds like so scamish that I just wouldn't want to touch it. You call it crypto sucks and get hate clicks. I see. When is VUSD going live? I'm not really sure. I I don't know at all uh, when VUSD is going live. Actually. Um, the, the thing is, like, I know they printed 10,000 of them already, but I don't really know when it's going to go big. Am I... Well, it's a... St well, Midloff, you're probably not going to lose much because it is a stable coin. IMX coin dump a lot after GameStop deal. Yeah, but, you know, like, they might be caught up in that Microsoft deal, so they actually might go up afterwards. Um, so, like, the uh, IMX and Microsoft execs have, like, hinted at a partnership there, uh, and that's via... That's actually via GameStop. So I do, I mean, IMX got super pumped for the GameStop deal for no apparent reason, but the Microsoft thing, the Microsoft thing is actually a legit reason to get excited. Parking is only 500, 5,000 for Super Bowl parking. Man, that's cheap. That's cheap. Why don't I just like buy a plane ticket there and then just like rent a hotel like a couple of miles from the stadium and walk there? Can we get VUSD now? I'm, I'm going to try to move this crypto time. I'm going to try to move my constant stream time to like probably like uh, 12, 12 central, like uh, like noon US, like noon central time, um, noon central standard time or like 11 o'clock central standard time or something. That, that'll be my like consistent stream. I'm going to try that. One of those like earlier in the day. Is VET more of a long-term one to three year hold? Yeah, I would say VET, like, I think you should look at all crypto holds besides meme coins as, like, longer-term holds. Yeah, dude, if I named a coin Magic Internet Money, it would not be a stable coin. It would, like, it would go to from, like, zero to a thousand, like, Magic, and then dump, that, uh, dump back down like Magic. 
I mean, the thing is like one to three, you should look at it as one to three years, but if, if at any time it moons, you should sell. The way is folks in Pacific Standard the time on 11, that's good. No, Pacific Standard Time, like if I if I start at noon Central Standard Time, Pacific is 10 a.m. Well, dude, if I if I made a coin called Magic Internet Coin, Magic Internet Money, it would definitely be a rug pull. Why why would I like if I made a if I made an actual crypto coin and called it Magic Internet Money, why would it not be a rug pull? He was our premier prime time five p.m. ish for people like myself who get home from work and don't want to watch negative fake news. Yeah, like five p.m. doesn't really work for me all that well. I, I'm actually out around five p.m. like during the summer. Most of my viewers are outside the USA. Yeah, but like that's what I'm thinking. Like, cause USA at twelve p.m. that's like people's lunch break. 12 p.m. is around, what, like 8 p.m. in Europe? And even like in the Australia, it's like maybe like midnight so people can still be on. Now, I know MIM isn't a rug pull. It's a stable coin, obviously. But I'm saying if I created a coin and called it magic internet money, it would totally be a rug pull because it's magic internet money. Why wouldn't it be a rug pull? What's up with uh, Safe Haven? And also, if I wanted to be taken, like, but, but the big E32, I also, if I wanted to be taken seriously, I wouldn't call my coin magic internet money. Make the video earlier? No, I mean, I'm talking a blue collar consciousness. I'm talking about my live stream. I, I'm not, I'm actually talking about my live stream, not, not the videos. I mean, I release a lot of videos per day. Advertisers have forked out up to 7 million for 30 seconds of television time. Yeah, so... The, the Super Bowl, like the Super Bowl pumping coins, I would guess are like, are, are mainly going to be uh, FTX, are, are going to be FTX and uh, CRO. I think those are going to be the ones that buy a lot of the uh, advertising time. I don't know how effective actually advertising in the Super Bowl is for crypto though. Uh, rug pull finance and say, it's a rug pull, people will buy. Dude. Dude, 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 I swear, if I, if today I said I was selling, like, I was selling tickets for my giant bunker underground that would actually, like, uh, that, that would actually shield you from nuclear weapons, I bet people would actually buy that ticket, even though I don't actually have a bunker. Look, like, remember back in, remember back in 2012, remember back in 2012 when the world was supposed to end, obviously it didn't, but when the world was supposed to end back in 2012, uh, like, some dude in China actually sold tickets for his supposed ARC to save humanity, and people actually bought tickets. Of course, they just got scammed, but that just goes to show you how dumb people are. I actually get more views like during the day on weekdays, for the most part. Like Saturday is not bad. Like tomorrow's live stream is probably going to be fairly late because I'm actually going. Uh, I'm actually going to go snow hiking during the day. No matter what name is, the only way to get YouTubers algorithm to recognize it is people hit the like or su and subscribe. It's called magic internet money to troll people who call crypto magic internet money. I suppose, I suppose, I can see that, but I I feel like it's just like if you call something magic internet money, I'm just gonna find it hard to take it seriously. If I'm selling Armageddon bunkers, I'll help dig the holes. No, 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 no. Blue collar consciousness. We don't actually need to have bunkers. We just need to like, we just need to say we have bunkers so people will buy the tickets because they're most likely never going to use them. So it doesn't really matter if they're there or not. Yes, I'm in Wisconsin. The 2012 thing, dude, that was like the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Like people, like people, like literally, like people literally bought tickets for like a safety arc. I'm like, I heard about that and I was like, man, those people are dumb. Wasn't there supposed to be a 14.0 earthquake in Taiwan a few years back? I don't think the Richter scale goes up that high. Really do not think the Richter scale goes up that high. We wouldn't even have this convo in Dallas, Texas. Well, I mean, like, it's not like Americans haven't fallen for these giant schemes before. They have, definitely. 
was that yes that was the mayan calendar crap because the mayan calendar obviously ended in 2012 obviously it was just a cycle and would start all over again but obviously because it ended in 2012 the world was supposed to end that uh that day but obviously we're still here look it's just like the y2k scare remember y2k was supposed to like send nukes flying everywhere because computers malfunction it didn't see ya man anyone needs toilet paper or cans or tuna hit your boy because i'm stacked yeah you know the thing is like you know, like I like I think like sometimes like chicken and beef actually like run short on stores right now, but like uh, fish, like I haven't really seen a shortage of. Plus, I can just go catch me some fish. No, I think a fourteen point oh, like if a giant asteroid like deep impact hit somewhere, that would definitely give you a fourteen point oh. I think it was the guy who made the creation, uh, creations. No, it was some like random Chinese guy. He didn't actually have an arc, obviously. The cre I find the creationist museum to be kind of funny. Like I don't mind like a Christian museum. I've actually been inside like a Christian museum. That's perfectly fine. Like a, a museum about your religion. But I think like like half the time space Karen. I think he just made that museum to troll. I think he just made that museum to troll evolution. Essentially, I think that's that's his main purpose of. One day I'm going to go to the Creation Museum, just just for shits and giggles, and I will make a video about the Creation Museum. Where is it though? I mean, I, I'm not a I'm not a young Earth I'm I'm not a young Earth creationist person, so. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not a young Earth creationist, so I, I actually don't believe the Earth is six thousand years old. But uh, I feel like he made this museum just to troll evolutionists, more or less. It's actually creationmuseum.org. I don't even know where this is. Oh, location. Oh, it's in Kentucky. It's too far. It's in Kentucky. If it was like in Wisconsin, I would go to the creationist museum. I'm one of the people, I'm actually one of the people that actually thinks like the first part of the Bible is mainly allegory. The museum is in the Garden of Eden. You know, it's, it's actually a really, it's actually a really interesting debate on where the Garden of Eden really is. SLP is down to maybe a buy. Well, I mean, I mean, Peter Somers, SLP is just the currency in uh, Axie Infinity though. So if Axie Infinity gets more popular, it, I mean, it, it'll go up. I mean... They're crazy about Axie in the Philippines. We know. I mean, we know they're crazy about Axie in the Filipino in, in the Philippines. So I mean, it's probably not such a bad. It's probably not such a coin bad coin to buy, but it's incredibly volatile. Not allegory, like you know, like um, like the seven days of creation, uh, Noah's Ark. I think that's mainly allegorical. Like maybe like when you get to like Abraham. Or like maybe when you get to like um, Leviticus and De Deuteronomy, that's like more actual. It depends which branch of science. I think like physicists tend to be a lot more atheist. Biologists also tend to be a little bit more atheist as well. First part of the Bible was essentially so much. I, I can understand why you would say that actually, because like a lot of like if you read the if you actually read the um, if you actually read the uh, story of Gilgamesh, it actually has like, like the, the, with the flood and everything, it actually has a similar story. So SC, the, the, the whole virgins thing, I think is like a misinterpretation, but they kind of market that to actually attract people to the religion, essentially. I actually think it's like 72 virtues. Uh, it's a collection of stories, locations and such. It's, it's essentially, yes, like, there is actually a really good video on YouTube about, like, what's mythical, what's legendary, and what's historical. Realistically, like, his, like it, we don't really get to the historical portion until, like, the later part of Kings. Are we screwed? I think we might be a little screwed, like, at the beginning of next week. The Fed thing is pretty scary. Like, I think a lot of people are actually worried about the Russia news, but I think the Fed emergency Fed meeting is a lot more scary for the market. I went to Champagne, Urbana Champagne. 
there are flood stories all over the world. And the thing is, there were like big catastrophic, there were many catastrophic floods around the Fertile, uh, around the fertile Crescent about five, 6,000 years ago. Uh, the, the one where like the base, the one where like the flood that connected the uh, Black Sea and the Mediterranean Sea, that was a really big flood. That could be one source for the flood story as well. Well, I've read the Bible multiple times. I know it fairly well. Obviously, I'm not like a religious scholar or anything. Um, but the thing is, like, I see the Bible as more of like a more like both a moral and like kind of a guide. Like the main person, purpose of the Bible is is like a moral, like kind of like a moral guideline. And also, well, the main purpose of the Bible is the the the, the, the gospels. It's like it's salvation. But the Old Testament specifically, the Old Testament is mainly like a, a guideline of how you should live your life. Like, the stories don't necessarily need to be 100% historically accurate. The story actually doesn't need to be 100% historically accurate for the Bible to actually have value. There's actually, a, look, if you look at useful charts, if you actually go to use, useful charts on YouTube, you'll actually find good videos about this. The guy's, like, Catholic, but, like, he actually, he sees it the same way I do. He, he doesn't think the Bible needs to be 100% historically accurate for the content to be, like, worth, like, for the content to be um, worthy or anything. I shouldn't handle any in that Bible. But Salamander, think about it. If you have 72 wives, you also have 72 sets of in-laws. Oh, I understand evolution in depth. I, I generally believe in evolution. I even believe in abiogenesis for the most part, but that doesn't mean God wasn't part of it. The Big Bang I have a little bit more trouble with because you're essentially telling me that everything just farted out of nothing. That's a little more, that's a bit more stretched than like abiogenesis. I have not read the works of Neville Goddard. But, um, well, the Chronicles of Narnia is basically based on the Bible, right? I mean, I mean, like if if it, if it weren't the um, if it wasn't for the Bible, there wouldn't be the Chronicles of Narnia, because like essentially, who's the gold uh, BSL? Who's the who's the central character in the Chronicles of Narnia? It's Aslan. He's the golden lion. You know what? Uh, you know what Christ is called in the in the Old Test in the Bible? Christ is called the golden lion of Judah. No, Moses actually lived to about one hundred and twenty. Um, it was it was the it was the the earlier patriarchs that lived actually to seven hundred plus years. I'm glad that they're watching, man. Glad they're watching. Dartmouth is a pretty fun, pretty cool school. I haven't I didn't actually go there, but it is one of the schools that I like uh, thought about. Um, I, it is one of the schools I thought about applying to, but UIUC had a better engineering program at the time, and I started off college um, in engineering, and plus UIUC was cheaper too, so. <laughs> Uh, you go people out there says Bibles. Well, I mean, it is technically like the gospels are definitely the word, uh, word of God, but, but you have to remember. So you really believe our ancestors were fish. Um, yeah, you can actually trace it. You know, like if you look at our DNA structure, we're about 50% similar with fish. I mean, like it, it's like all life on earth kind of does have the same roots. No, I, I, I haven't been atheist since college, but I, I know, look, I, I've read the Bible and the first parts of the Quran. They're very similar, except, except one difference, uh, one major difference. In the Quran, um, God's covenants pass through both Isaac and Ishmael, whereas in the Bible, it's only passed through Isaac. That's, the, that's one huge difference. Yes, I don't disagree with you. God's definitely real. Obviously, I believe God's real. Otherwise, I wouldn't be Christian, right? You can't be Christian if you don't think God's real. If you don't believe in like, if you don't believe in the redeeming blood of Christ, you can't be Christian, right? But that doesn't mean I disregard science. Faith Kindy does a great job breaking down the timelines and parallels. Yes, I'm Christian. Look, look. look. Look, religion and there are parts of religion and science that are not reconcilable, but a lot of it is reconcilable. A salamander. I I don't really know if God has a name like a human name as we interpret it. He's just God. Whether you call him God, Jehovah, Allah, or whatever, it's it's kind of like this. It's the same thing. God is just God. It technically, if you're a, look. 
technically, if you're a monotheist, it, it, technically, if you're a monotheist, there is it's all the same God because there's only one God. All right. If so, if you're if you're a monotheist, if you're actually a monotheist, there's only one God, and um, yeah, basically there is no other God to believe in. So regardless of which what like which God you technically believe in, it's the same God, because if you're like because like monotheism basically means belief in one God. So there's only one God. Lord Krishna of India, that is one of the big, that is like a huge figure in Hinduism, I believe. Some, like some people actually do believe that Krishna is an earlier incarnation of Jesus Christ, but obviously I don't believe that. Um, yeah, I mean like Christianity, Christ is technically, I mean like it, it, the, the whole Trinity thing is like really weird to explain. But it is something central to our belief. Uh, well, there's many names. There's actually, Salamander, there's actually many names for God in the Bible. Jehovah is one of them. Emmanuel, like uh, Emmanuel. There's also Yahweh. So like whichever one of those, like, I mean, there's Jesus, there's Jehovah, there's Yahweh. There's other names for like... Um, there's other names for God. No, I'm not a Jehovah Witness, so I don't believe in the same thing you do. Uh, BSL, you don't have to have kids just because you're Christian. Apostle Paul never had kids. I don't know if any of the apostles actually had kids. The, the thing is, Perry... The thing is, Perry, you can actually tra track our genetic differences and similarities up through the evolutionary tree. They've actually done that. Like we're closer to we're close we're closer to chimps, orangutans, and gorillas than anything else. We share more of our DNA with them than anything else. Monotheistic religions tend to be the most violent. Um, that's not true. If you look at India as an example, that's not true. The Hinduists are not very tolerant of the Muslims there. But but you you are SC you are kind of right because monotheistic in monotheistic religions there is only one god and so there's only one central figure to follow so it, it's a lot more like a top like in monotheistic religions it's a lot more like a top down type of belief which is easier which actually leads to like I guess like more fanaticism. Jesus is the son of God, but he's also like, he's also one with God. Like remember in the beginning, like in the beginning, there was the, uh, in the beginning, there was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The thing, uh, like if you, if you actually look at like the, uh, if you actually look at the first few verses of the Bible, it actually does say Jesus was God. There have been a lot of wars fought over religion, but Peggy Johnson, I actually do think that like the, the church in Europe, like the, the church is why actually Europe ended up with like more of a democratic type of government and China like actually ended up with like an authoritarian government. I think that had a lot to do with it because if, if you think about it, like in Europe, the church and the kings shared power and that plays a big part into like creating our democratic type of government that we have today, the sharing of power. In China, the state was always all powerful. The state never shared power with any religion. And like if the state didn't like the religion, it would just kick the religion out. So essentially like that like because China never really had shared power between like the church, uh, between the church or like between a religion and the king itself, it evolved to more author uh, authoritarian ideals. Whereas Europe having both the church and the kings, they kind of evolved more of like a compromise type of government. Yes, uh, according to Christian tradition, Jesus is God. Look, the Trinity is actually really hard to explain. It's like the three in one thing. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are like one but yet different at the same time. Yes, but but look, Salamander, read the first part of the read read like uh, read John one one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
the word is referring to Jesus. So he technically he was actually God. Yeah, but but SC, the, the, the fact that China never had a strong religion is part of the reason they have an authoritarian type of government. Because the king never had to share power with anyone. In Europe, the king actually had to share power with the church. And because like he had to share power with the church, he never had absolute power. So it, it like like the, the the church plays a very, very important historical role in terms of like providing for a democratic type government. Three, yes, it, that's that's where the three in one Trinity thing comes from, Perry. They're all like he is I am. Like all three of them are referred to as I am. Well, I mean, he, I mean, the, we we also um. Well, it'll be us out. Like it also says in the Bible that he actually sits at the right hand of the Father Almighty. So there's you can argue both ways, but like in 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 in, uh, in most Christianity, there is the Trinity. There is the Trinity. Jehovah Witnesses don't really believe the Trinity, but like God has been called many names. Like whether you call him like Yahweh, whether you call him Jehovah, it's God. Trinity is a Catholic concept? Um, not real. I mean, like, I don't really know if you could call it Catholic at that point. I mean, it was at the Treaty of Nantes. I think it was like, no, the, the Treaty of Nassin or something that they actually decided all this stuff. I guess you could, you can call it Catholic because like the only former Christian, the form, the only form of Christianity that was there was Catholicism. So I suppose you could say it's Catholic. Sure. I'll give you that. Chuck, you know, like Chuck Norris is all in all three, in all nine Star Wars movies. He's known as the Force. Well, the Space Karen, the, the thing is, you can say it's Catholic, but it actually applies to all of Christianity. Every single, every single Christian denomination, um, every single Christian denomination, aside from Jehovah Witnesses, actually do believe in the Trinity. Like Protestants believe in the Trinity. Interpretation and human love of power and control will never allow the belief that is inspired by God. Well, I mean, I, I can't really argue with that. The concept of the Trinity predates Catholicism, and regardless of clearly the Trinity is revealed in the scriptures. Yes, I mean, look, look Perry Fernandez, the, the thing is, like, the canonical Bible was actually compiled about 300 years after Christ's death. I mean, and that was like, and like the, the issue was whether Christ was actually divine or not was actually the main issue at that council. Now at that council, they did actually like declare that Christ was divine. So all the scriptures that said Christ wasn't actually became heretical at that, around that point. I think this was a little bit before Constantine be, be, became the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. Thanks, man. Thanks, Leo Nation. Tell me more about uh, V-Chain. So... I mean, right now for VeChain, you're kind of looking at VUSD, VEX, and other yield farming options. Because the yield farming options are going to be what, like, is profitable right now. Um, the non-yield, like, the, the stuff, because right now we're in a sideways market. So unless you get, like, incredible news for VeChain, like VeChain gets listed on Coinbase, for example, which I don't really know when's going to actually happen. Uh Outside of that, like it's really going to be like the stablecoin stuff, and it's going to be the yield farming that gets me interested because I'm making money off of yield farming right now, and that's like that's exciting to me. Yes, Catholicism is the original church. I believe Peter is the first was technically the first pope, Saint Peter. Um. Technically, yeah, you're right. Buddhism technically does not actually believe in a god. I mean, Buddha's not supposed to be a god. Uh, look, I, I think, like, Buddhas aren't supposed to be gods that are supposed to be worshipped. Buddhas are just people that achieve nirvana, which essentially, like, means they ascended to, like, enlightenment or whatever. They're not necessarily gods. Buddha, Like, Buddha didn't just create the universe. Like, Buddhism and Taoism are two different things. I think a lot of people mix up Buddhism and Taoism. They're two different things. In Tao, there in Tao, there actually in Taoism, there are actually gods. In Buddhism, there aren't actually gods. 
at least not like the earliest forms of Buddhism. I think later forms of Buddhism, there were actually gods. Like Buddhas actually became gods. What are your thoughts on the separation of church and state? I like the separation. I think the church and the state should actually be separated. And I think mostly for the protection of people. Uh, yeah, Jesus was technically, like Jesus was definitely a rebel, but he was a rebel within the laws, within the rules. Uh, I wouldn't say that, Michael Presti. I don't think Buddhist countries are different from any other countries. I've been to all countries, and all of them have, like, pickpockets and thieves, including the United States. So, like, all countries have good people and bad people, and which religion you are doesn't really affect it all that much. Gnostics were the original church, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't really know. Like, there were, like, Todd Make, like, originally there are a lot of factions. I, I don't think Jesus' disciples were actually Gnostics. Yes, the Jews are still waiting on a Messiah because they don't believe in the coming of Jesus Christ, remember? The Muslims actually believe in Jesus. They just believe in Muhammad more. Can do nationalism? Yeah, look, Space Karen, any kind of nationalism, whether it's Hindu nationalism, Christian nationalism, or atheist nationalism, they're all bad. Nationalism is bad overall. There definitely needs to be separation of church and state because you can't actually make policy. Uh, because because of America is technically more of a secular country and there you have a lot of people of different religions here, you can't make policy based on religion. That's the thing. Nationalism, look, look nationalism tends to like turn into racism like pretty much every single time. If nationalism is basically like our country's the best, so we need to conquer everyone else. That's kind of what nationalism ends, ends up being. Yeah, but but uh, the like Jesus did that because the people in the temple were already breaking the rules. Like them, they themselves were breaking the the, the rules of God for the, for their uh, for their prophets and tradition. Look at like what na like nationalism. You can look at like you can look at nationalism. Like uh, essentially, Nazism was nationalism. Fascism essentially sprung from nationalism. Essentially, like, fascism always springs from nationalism. Like, nationalism is also different from patriotism as well. Like, nationalism tends to be, like, uh, loving your country to the, to the detriment of others, where patriotism doesn't have that second part. Cat, cat Bible studies. There are things that can turn into cults. They don't necessarily need to be based around a god, honestly. Nationalism tends to turn into like fanaticism, and it tends it, it almost always turns into fascism. Dictators generally use nationalism to rile up their country. Like the the, chi the whole China Taiwan thing is because of is, is mostly because of nationalism. They basically rouse like the the, the entire national nationalistic sentiment of China, and that's how they actually get people to avoid the problems back home and try to and want to take over Taiwan. Well, the Muslims don't think either Jesus or Muhammad is God. So it, Islam does not actually think God ever came down to earth, okay? So, like, it, it's a different belief. I don't really have to... Th I don't really have to have the media tell it. I can just look at history. Like, I, I know that, like, um... Basically, like, Nazism sprung from nationalism... And so does this like whole like 
And this whole thing about China wanting to take over Taiwan and everything else, that also springs from nationalism. Look, the, the whole anti-globalism thing is dumb because once the internet became once the internet became like a large scale, globalism was like unavoidable. The, the whole thing, look, believe it or not, like cryptocurrency represents globalism because globalism is basically like something that's without borders and cryptocurrency does not actually have borders. The say the, the Quran, I, I'm not going to comment on other religions. Like the thing is, if you ask me to prove my religion, I can't do it. Just like if you ask anyone to prove their religion, they really can't do it. Yeah, realistically, like crypto is like the most anti-nationalistic thing there is. Because essentially, like crypto does represent globalism. It's like seamless transaction without borders. Of course, the Jews canonicize the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the cor The Old Testament is the Torah. Like the Old Testament actually is the Torah. Like the first five. Look, the first five. The first five books of the Old Testament are called the Pentateuch. I, I don't understand. Look, I don't understand how people can be pro crypto and pro nationalism. That doesn't make any sense at all. The two are like dynamically different from each. Like the, the crypto and nationalism are like dynamically like opposed to each other. Did you know that Jesus was single and he had no kids either? There's there's no white supremacy thing between uh, between crypto and uh, there's no there's no connection between crypto and white supremacy. I think Jesus and every one of his apostles were single and didn't have kids. Look, whoever that troll is, he's incredibly uneducated and he's just an idiot. I mean, that's all there is to it. I think I think Paul like I think Paul might have been married before because he was like Apostle Paul also might have been married before because he was part of the Sanhedrin. And I think you have to be you you had to be like married to be part of the Sanhedrin. I'm I'm not sure though. But at the time of at the time he during the time that he was Jesus' disciple, I don't think he was married. Oh, my, my degree was in business in business administration. Oh yeah, the whole like flying spaghetti monster thing. That was that was kind of like weird, honestly. I mean, I'm not gonna say anything about the. Obviously, that thing was trolled, but so I'm not really gonna say too much about it. The thing is, like Christianity doesn't actually say if you have to you, whether you have to be married or not. It that it makes no difference. You can be Christian whether you're married or single. It's it's kind of irrelevant. I had a concentration in logistics management, but honestly, all the degrees are the same in uh, business administration. Well, that's not a problem for me because I'm not I, I'm not Muslim. Oh, the the one that so yeah it, it was it it was the it was I think it was the centurion that said like like after he saw what the events of what happened he is like surely this must be the son of God so I guess you could make an argument of that. Oh, 
A lot of the New Testament is like Paul's letters. There were Peter's letters as well. But none of the but none of the four gospels were actually written by Paul though. All right, guys, that's enough religious history for today. We will continue this discussion later. Like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications button, and I will